Well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Mike Amico and with OM System. And tonight we're going to talk about long exposure modes in the OM System slash Olympus cameras. And I hope everybody's having a great time out there. And thank you for joining. So a little bit different tonight. I'm going to present a little presentation for you. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to answer questions. I'm going to hold off on questions until after uh, the presentation. So something a little bit different, uh, but we'll check out those questions at the end. Hopefully I'll answer some questions during the presentation as I go through that, answer your questions. And, uh, and then at the end, we'll actually, after the questions, after I answer a few of those, we'll actually do a live demonstration on uh, some light painting. So hopefully that will also help you out uh, with getting into some of these modes and also uh, enjoying your camera for some fun shooting. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get started here. And again, thanks everybody for joining. And tonight we're going to talk about long exposures. So let's go here. All right, let's see what we got. So long exposure modes found in the OM system cameras. This is one of the coolest things about these cameras that we've been doing this a while. It's some of our computational features. Some of the best features that we have are these long exposure modes. And we're going to focus a little bit more on the live composite mode or live comp in your camera. So very, very cool uh, feature. And one of the features that I think allows you to, once you get a handle on it, uh, be able to really sort of extend your creativity and and do some more with your camera that you may not have thought you could do before uh, or may have thought uh, that it wasn't possible before. So let's uh, let's take a look. By the way, this image I took uh, the other night in Arizona, and this was with Live Composite. Um, it's a little out of focus on the bottom, and that's because I uh, was in my hotel room with no tripod and used a garbage can flipped over with an iPad on it and a shirt and a wallet and uh, to get out my window and shoot this. So this is through the window, but it was kind of cool. All right, so if you haven't done any classes with me, my name is Mike Amico, and I'm a trainer here with uh, with OM System, and I've uh, been here for a while now, since the beginning, and with Olympus from 2015, but in the industry since 2000. So uh, I love the Four Thirds cameras, and these cameras really allow me to, to really have a lot of fun. They're like toys to me, and that's what I love about them. I always want to shoot them, want to take them with me, and uh, I really, really enjoy some of these computational features like this that we're going to talk about tonight as well, uh, because they allow me to have a lot of power in these cameras when I'm out. I mean, what's what's better than going to, I don't know, Niagara Falls uh, with your family and pulling out a small camera like an OM5 and being able to capture uh, the falls in, in a way that you can't do with anything other than like an ND filter, but you can do that from within the camera with these computational features. I mean, very cool. Or the Sistine Chapel and take a high resolution shot with that camera. So just really fun stuff. So I'm really appreciative for everybody joining me here. All right. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight. Skip the fireworks. That's from a, something I did about a month ago. And if you missed it, I'm sorry, but uh, this is also a great feature for fireworks. What we're going to talk about tonight, though, is some of the different types of long exposure in the OM system cameras. We're going to talk about live comp. What is live comp? How do I get there? How do I get to these uh, features? What can I do with these features or live comp? And then I'm going to give you specifically 15 tips uh, that I think might be helpful for when you're doing live composite. And uh, then we'll do a live demonstration after I answer uh, a few questions for everybody. And we'll try to keep it simple because I feel like this is one of those things where, you know, a lot of people um, just, they, they get confused and um, I don't want to get too, too deep. And excuse me for not changing the fireworks mode, but I just did this presentation for a fireworks class. So sorry about that. Uh, but don't forget to print your images big. Uh, don't be worried about printing. I always put this in my presentations. Um, printing is a whole different industry now. And I know a lot of customers say, Hey, how big can I print, uh, with this, this camera? And, uh, when I ask them how big they print, they say, well, maybe an eight by 10, maybe a 16 by 20 and, uh, no problem. I'm doing 20 thirties all the time. That print right there that I'm holding in this picture is a, is a, uh, 40 by 60. Um, so you have a, a long way to go with your images with just a little. So which camera can I use to create these, these long exposure modes, you know, to be creative, what can I use in the lineup? And the cool thing about this is pretty much any camera uh, that we've made since probably like 2012 and on, uh, every camera in the lineup has this live composite feature, as well as the lifetime and the bulb mode that we'll talk about, including the TG6 tough camera. So 
Uh, very, very cool that you can basically grab any camera in the lineup, go out and have some fun with it. So uh, you're going to see this is this is really cool, especially if you're, you know, in the north, you get some winter and, you know, there's a day you're sitting around, you're trying to figure out how to use your camera and you want to maybe try something new. Uh, so maybe you do some macro of a flower and you you do some light, light painting. I mean, just really, really fun stuff to give yourself an assignment. So uh, let's go a little further here. All right. So one of the coolest things, like I said, that I love about the OM system cameras is the computational technologies. And we've been taking them a lot further. Um, here's some of those technologies that we have. So pro capture, which is super cool. So if you're shooting things like birds or, you know, even a bride kissing a groom or maybe a baseball player hitting a ball with a bat, you know, maybe, uh, maybe lightning, um, you know, you see the lightning, you hold down your shutter, you capture it, or even an air show with airplanes. Um, always get that shot. And so pro capture is very, very cool for that. Focus stacking and bracketing in the cameras. Uh, very, very fun. I don't do this a lot, uh, but it's very cool. I see a lot of people using it and they do fantastic with it, whether handheld or whether on a tripod. Uh, I use the AI detection autofocus all the time on the OM1, uh, formerly on my EM1X uh, to shoot birds, uh, but it's also great for uh, canines and felines, and cats and dogs, uh, planes, trains, automobiles, and birds. Uh, so very, very cool stuff. Tonight, we're going to talk about long exposure, which is uh, super fun. We also had that live ND I mentioned when I talked about Niagara Falls and capturing the falls with effects like you would see using an ND filter. It's a very, very cool feature. A lot of these features, when they announce them, I go, no, 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 there's no way that's going to work on a pro camera. And it does. And they're a lot of fun. Uh, but one of my favorites as well is the high resolution shooting. Um, you know, being able to handhold a 50 megapixel image uh, like this. Um, which was shot at Hocking Hills in Ohio, fantastic state park, uh, just a lot of fun. So tonight, let's talk about long exposure again. Here we go. Okay, so let's talk about some of the different types of long exposure. Um, if anybody comes from shooting film uh, and you loved long exposure, you know, shooting a city at night or shooting something really fun, uh, you know, you had this piece of paper or a little notebook you would take with you and you'd write down, you know, one through 24 or one through 36 for your film, the amount of numbers of, of shots you had. And then you'd go out and you'd grab your remote shutter and you'd plug it into your camera and you would sit there with your camera on a tripod and you would put it in bulb. You would press that shutter and hold it and you would count the seconds on your watch um, or any kind of a timepiece. Right. And then, you know, you'd count 10 seconds. Okay. Number one, 10 seconds, you know, 200 ISO film, you know, what have you, uh, number two, maybe it's 30 seconds and you would keep going and then you'd, you'd get this film process and check it out with digital cameras. It, it became great because you just press the button. And as you see here, it just counts the seconds and you press play and you see what you got. So I go, Oh, 10 seconds. What did I get? Ah, it's a little overexposed. Let me try it at five seconds. Well, Olympus slash OM came up with a whole new way of doing it, and that was live time. And live time allows you to press that shutter button or the remote and then just watch that exposure take place just like this. And as it takes place, you look at it and go, hey, that's what I want. You know, there's the city coming in at night, 10 seconds, boom, I press the shutter again, and it stops the exposure. So very, very cool. Watch this again. You press that shutter button or that remote shutter. And then you watch the exposure take place. I mean, it's really cool, you know, fireworks and light painting and all that stuff. Really, really fun. So this is a really cool feature. But the one we're going to really focus on is live composite. And live composite's a little bit different. With this mode, you select the amount of time. In this case, it's one second. And um, the camera is going to layer images, one second images, uh, or, you know, one second up to six, half a second to 60 seconds, actually, you could select. Um, and it's going to layer these images on top of each other. Uh, the initial exposure is not going to change. So you're not going to blow out the, let's say, the city at night if you're shooting it. Um, and it allows you to do a lot of fun things. Uh, one thing that we advertise a lot is star trails, right? So you look at the back of your screen up to three hours on most cameras, six hours on an OM one, and you could just sit there and have a drink with your friends and watch the, watch the stars appear. Right. And then you stop it when you're done. Very, very cool, um, mode. So we're going to get into that a little bit more, but it's a lot of fun. So let's go a little bit further. 
So here's how it works. Live comp, you know, you press the shutter button and that pretty much readies the camera for composite shooting. So if I set it for say two seconds, I'm going to press that shutter button once. Usually I'm using a remote or the phone remote, press that shutter. Boom. Two seconds. It readies the camera. So it basically takes like a, a dark image, right? A dark slide. The second shutter press starts the whole series of exposures. So now two seconds, right? and then another two seconds, and then another two seconds. And you're going to see these appearing on the screen. Uh, it's going to be at your chosen shutter speed, right? Two seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it is. The lightning shot I did at the beginning of the presentation was 15 seconds. Um, so only new light is going to appear. It's really, really interesting. And when I do my demonstration, you'll see this a little bit better and kind of understand it more. It's one of those things that it's hard to wrap your head around when you first do it. Um, first time I came to Olympus 2015. I had an EM5 Mark II and I went to shoot fireworks and I got so frustrated. It was dark out and I'm trying to figure this mode out and I'm pressing the shutter a few times. I didn't think, hey, there's one press of the shutter, gets it ready. The next press, number two, starts it. Number three stops it. So there's three presses of the shutter for this mode. I didn't realize and I kept pressing it and it wasn't going. I couldn't understand it. So if you get frustrated, it's normal, but try not to get frustrated. These are computers and you know, you just, it just takes time. It just takes time to figure it out. And once you do, it's really, really fun. So cool thing about it is this can be done in JPEG and or raw. So it's full resolution. You do not get all of the images. So if you take a hundred images at one second, you don't get a hundred images like focus stacking. You just get the one final image put together and layered. So how do you get to these modes? Um, really, most cameras, you would go to the um, the manual mode. Most of the cameras that we had formerly, you'd go to M on your dial. Uh, newer cameras like the OM5, the EM5 III, EM1 Mark III, EM1X, and OM1, you would just go to bulb, go to B on your dial. Um, other ways to get to it, an EM10 Mark III or an EM10 Mark IV, the entry-level uh, interchangeable lens cameras, you would go to the uh, AP mode, which is the advanced photo mode, and that'll put you in there. Or, cool thing about those cameras, you can also go to manual mode and get to it. Now, when you go to manual mode in the cameras that don't have bulb, you take the rear dial on your camera, you turn it to the left, and you keep going. You're, you're going to see your shutter speed on the back LCD go down, down, down. It's going to go you know, 10th of a second, right? Fifth of a second. It's going to go all the way down. You're going to start seeing what looks like inches, one inch, two inch, but that's actually seconds. It's just the, um, what, how it shows that. And you'll keep going to get to 60 seconds. And then after 60 seconds, it'll say bulb in big letters. And then you hit it again, your rear dial to the left, and it'll say live time. And you go one more time. You can't go any further. And it'll say live comp on the bulb mode or B on the newer cameras, uh, you just are automatically in bulb. You go to the left once on the rear dial, it goes to live time. You go once, it goes to live comp. What's nice about that is even though they work the same, if you're in like, you know, 2,500 of a second and you got to put it in manual and just keep going down, uh, you know, it takes a while, right? You're, you're scrolling down. You go right to bulb and it's right there. So nice and easy. And that that's what makes it uh, really simple here. So, um, so that's how you get to uh, these modes. Very, very, very cool. Uh, this is kind of what you'll see. So um, on the left here is what you're going to see for the most part on your cameras. On the right is what you're going to see when you're in that AP mode using the EM10 series, uh, Mark III and Mark IV. The Mark II will be similar to the left. Um, so basically what you're going to see is your rear LCD. Um, anytime on the bottom there where it says live comp and F2.8 on the left, uh, anytime you have something highlighted in yellow like that on the bottom of your LCD, uh, that means you can change it with your dials. And so in this case, live comp is where your shutter speed would normally be, right? And then the F stop, which is 2.8 in this case. On the right, very, very cool, very, very easy, EM10.3, EM10.4. You put it in AP mode, you go to live comp, and you hit OK. And it does everything for you, which is really cool. So once you're in live comp mode on the other cameras, or if you go manual on the 10, 3, and 4, uh, you just go ahead and hit menu. Now, menu allows you to change your shutter speed from anywhere from a half a second, 
for the exposures to 60 seconds. It really depends on what you're shooting. And I'll give you some tips after that'll kind of give you an idea of where to set it, sort of like cheat modes um, for the most part. But it, it's really a lot of trial and error with this setting, uh, like a lot of the computational features with uh, OM. Uh, you know, some of this stuff just you have to play. And the more you play, the more you kind of get in your head sort of an about of where you need to be. Uh, but I'll show you some ways to cheat. Um, so yeah, half a second to 60 seconds. Now, if you press OK, which I'll do after on my demonstration, after you select, say, half a second, you're going to see a, a menu item come up, a list of, of menu items, um, like the amount of time for refresh rate and all that stuff. And that's basically your composite settings. It brings you to those settings in the menu once you hit OK and set it. So I just hit the shutter halfway and get out of that. Um, you're not going to want to set those while you're in the middle of shooting this. If you want to change any of those settings, you can go into your main menu and change those at some point. I, to be honest, leave those alone. Uh, I leave them at a 0.5 second refresh and I leave everything where it is and don't really mess with it. But there's things there you may or may not want to change. Um, you could check your manual or Check that out to see if there's anything you want to change. I leave everything right there, standard from the factory. Now, the other thing you do, and I didn't show this, was um, if you hit OK and bring up your super control panel, uh, you can change all of your other settings, right? So I would go to you know, manual focus. I would go to, um, depending on what I'm shooting, am I shooting star trails? Am I shooting... Uh, like this scene right here, a city at night, uh, this scene, I would probably shoot it like maybe an F eight, right? Whereas the star trails, I might shoot at a 1.8. Um, so I would open it right up. Now you are limited to the highest ISO that you can go when you're doing live time or live comp, I should say is uh, 1600 ISO. So keep that in mind. Uh, and that really, again, in my tips, you'll see where you might use that. And this is sort of a, an idea of what you might see. So if I'm reviewing the screen, I'm watching this happen, you know, in real time, uh, that first shot on the top left is a half a second. So these are half second images. Uh, this is times two. And you can see the one in the middle there on the top is times 26. So we sped it up a little bit, but you're getting an idea of what's happening here. You're noticing that the sun went down. You had a little bit of that blue hour. You got some orange sky still, right? That initial exposure captured all that. And now what's happening is you're capturing the lights of the cars as you do more half second exposures. Uh, that bottom image is probably, it's a little over a hundred images, but check out how the sky stayed the same. Uh, if a light went on in one of the hotel windows, you would capture that. So it's really interesting how it renders uh, these scenes. It's a very, very cool feature and a lot of fun. There's really not much to, to go through on it. You really have to play. And that's what it's, uh, that's what it's all about. So what can you use this feature for? What can I use uh, live composite for? Well, there's a bunch of things you can use it for. And then some, because again, this is one of those features where I really feel that, you know, some people would say, well, star trails, you're cheating, right? The camera does it for you. I don't think so. I think that it allows you to be more creative now because you can go, okay, I don't have to worry about layering this in Photoshop. Now I can do it in the camera. Now I can paint a barn in the front. Now I can do something at sunset and then get some star trails, you know, things like that. So it allows you to be fun. There's a shot from our very own Michela, some epic fireworks, some lightning strikes, star trails with no editing, uh, clouds and water. It gives you a really neat rendering of water when you use a um, live composite. It's just different, more like glass-like on the water. Products are fun, a lot of fun. That's kind of what we're going to paint tonight. Uh, and then street scenes and uh, light trails. A lot of fun doing, you know, scenes like that. I love going to carnivals. That's a lot of fun. So you can use it for almost anything. Now, can you use it for creative portraiture? And you can. And again, some examples from Michela, as you all know. And she's fantastic at this. I mean, using a tripod, you use some flash, uh, some creative lighting gear, such as maybe... You know, uh, I have a Savage Light Wand. It's an RGB Light Wand, so you can change the uh, uh, the colors. That's what you see up in the top uh, right there, something similar with the green. Uh, it, it's almost endless possibilities for color, for style, for texture. Uh, I mean, there's so many tools, so many things you can use. I mean, you could put a TV behind somebody and hit them with a flash and then go ahead and, and let the TV roll. There's so many different ways to be creative with this mode. It's a lot of fun. So very, very cool. Now, what are some tools of the trade? What can I use for light painting with this mode? 
And that's another cool thing. There are so many things you can use. I just went out today and bought a pen light and I was hoping it would be something that would be nice and narrow and it wasn't. So I took my business card and I just, uh, taped it to the light. It made it a little more narrow. We're going to try it out tonight. Um, but I'm always buying, you know, LEDs and different things. And this is where your creativity can shine. So experiment. There's really no wrong way and there's no wrong thing to use. I've used bike lights, flashlights, sparklers, you know, kids writing with sparklers. It, just remember that if you write something, unless you're drawing a heart or something like that, if you're writing a word, you have to write it backwards, which is even more fun. Uh, because when you write it, correctly, it's going to come out backwards on the camera. So just remember that you'll see it in the screen. Uh, but an LED light one, that's one of my favorites. Uh, I'll show those to you in a minute. Uh, the glow sticks, cell phone lights. Uh, you can actually get apps where you can change the color on your cell phone and use the light from your cell phone. Uh, very cool stuff. So just experiment. Now, this is a really important section, and then we'll be done with the presentation, and we'll do some answers of questions and some live. Uh, but what's cool about this is I, I, I think I'll be able to probably answer with some of these tips some of your questions that you're probably asking that I can't see right now. So, all right. So here we go. Number one. This was a while back. So paint with light the beginning of your exposure. You know, uh, you only get one chance. So this is a great example. I painted this barn and I, I was just starting out and trying to get a light, a star trail. And, uh, you know, I don't go out a lot at night like this. I, I do landscape during the day and stuff. So for me, a lot of the night shots don't happen. And so I wanted to try it. And here I kind of, you know, I had like this 40, 45 minute exposure and you could see here what I did wrong. I was at 200 ISO. I wasn't letting enough light in. So the stars, I didn't get much of a star trail, but it's still kind of cool. Right. Uh, but I light painted this barn and I light painted it around the middle. So about 25 minutes in, I walked in the barn, I went around the barn, I hit it with my, my headlights from the car and it's okay, but if I had the chance, I would do it over. But that's the problem. If you don't light paint in the beginning of your exposure, you wait, you know, an hour for star trails and you go, that's what I want. Let me go light paint the barn. And you don't like the way it looks. You have to start over. And that's another hour because again, you're layering these, these images. There's no going back. Once it's done, it's done. So, so definitely paint with light in the beginning of your exposure. If you don't like it, you scrap it and you start over. All right, number two is to try the focus peaking feature. So that's in order to get some accurate focus. So if you haven't done that, focus peaking is really cool. It's a great way to focus on stars, unless you have, of course, the EM1 Mark III or the uh, OM1. It, they'll actually focus on stars as well as the OM5. So pretty cool feature, and it works. Um, focus peaking works in red, black, white, or yellow. And what it does is it highlights the contrasty areas of your image. When those areas are highlighted with that color, that's the area that's in focus. So an example here is the um, keys on the piano here. Um, the red highlight, it's that's what's in focus is those keys. So I use this all the time uh, where I use red. I use high intensity red. Uh, the only time I lose that is typically if I'm shooting you know, certain flowers or in the fall, I might lose it with the red leaves. Um, otherwise I use red and it, it works really, really well. Um, now where you find this is that in the OMD cameras, it's under the gear menu in the big menu. Uh, it's under a four manual focus or MF assist. And you'll see uh, focus peaking, uh, in there. You just want to turn that on. And then if you go further in that menu, you'll see peaking settings. And if you want, you can, it'll automatically be red, but you can change it. Uh, you can also change the intensity, uh, from normal to high or low. Again, I do high intensity, uh, a lot of red. In the OM1, it's a little bit different. It's in the autofocus menu or the AF menu, and you want to go to page six. So you use your front dial, get over to that AF menu, and then your rear dial, you go through those pages and bring it over to the page six. You'll see um, manual focus assist or MF assist. Go ahead and turn peaking on there, and you'll be all set. Uh, it's very cool. Um, it just totally away from live comp. Uh, but just so you know, if you ever adapt lenses to the OM system, to the four thirds camera, uh, let's say you have an old M's Zuiko or F Zuiko, I should say lens from the, uh, the eighties, let's say you have a 50 millimeter one eight and you adapt it to the camera. You can use focus peaking, uh, to focus that lens. So you're not dead in the water trying to focus, uh, but you have to put focus peaking in that case on a function button. 
And the reason why is because there's no electronic contacts in a manual lens like that. Same thing with like uh, some of the uh, Laowa lenses, uh, like maybe the seven, seven millimeter Laowa that doesn't have any uh, electronic contacts. Uh, it's manual focus. You could put peaking on a function button. You could turn it on and off that way because the camera doesn't know there's a lens. So you're kind of fooling it. So we don't have to worry about this for tonight. I just wanted to throw that out as an extra note, little side note there. How did I learn that? A Leica lens, couldn't figure it out. And a uh, customer and I were spending a little bit of time trying to figure that out. And, then, and it, then it hit me. I'm like, geez, how could I not think of that? So yeah, that's a little tidbit. All right. One of my favorite things to do, check out your local state fair or carnival. Those are going on right now. So rides make for some really cool and amazing subject matter when using live composite. Uh, this is how it looks. This is a county fair near me in Ohio. Uh, it's, there's something about the way that live composite renders the rides. It, it's a little bit different than just your typical long exposure. I, I can't really explain it, but if you look at this image, the way that you see through the ride, the way that the lights give me those stars, the way that it renders is just fantastic. Now, typically for me, just to throw out some numbers, this kind of shooting, I'm usually shooting at like 200 ISO. I'm probably at F8. Uh, f11 somewhere in that range usually 7.1 to 8 and then i just let it go at like you know one second exposures or whatever so you play a little bit but usually i'm around one second or two seconds uh, for something like this and it's a lot of fun just let it render you know people walk by and you get ghosting of feet and you know ghosting of faces and, and heads it's really really fun so check that out and here's my attempt at a portrait. So this was actually during COVID. This was, uh, so place people in your image. That's my tip number four here. Very fun putting people in the image. Uh, this is actually my daughter. This was during COVID and we had like nothing to work with. So I had a light, uh, I had a, a strobe light uh, with an umbrella on it or a, actually a soft box. You can see that in her glasses. And I popped her with a flash and then I ran around the back of her, had her stand still, uh, ran around the back of her with my cell phone. So that yellowish light is my cell phone LED. And the colorful lights are the app I was talking about, one of the apps where you can change colors on your camera and make it sort of an RGB. So, you know, it's just, I mean, that's just in a living room, just playing around. So again, you can have a lot of fun. Uh, you could do a lot of practicing just right in your own living room uh, and do it by yourself or with somebody. But being able to place uh, people in the image is a lot of fun. So. All right, so number five is trying it on moving water. And I was telling you before how moving water gives you that sort of uh, different type of look. And this is sort of what I was talking about. It's it's like a glassy kind of look as the water comes through. Here you can see sort of the trail of the water as it comes through the flow of the water. You know, if you have uh, dark areas, you could paint them. In this case, I, I actually used a flashlight to paint a little bit of the rocks over here on the left. Uh, they were a little bit in shadow. And so I wanted to uh, bring a little bit more in. Now I used an ND filter here. So I didn't use internal live ND. You can't combine computational features in the OM. Um, maybe years down the road with, with processing, you know, but right now you can't do that. So I did put an ND filter on the lens, allowed me to shoot longer exposure during the day and uh, did a longer exposure here. Pretty fun stuff. This is one of my favorite things to do. So um, I'll be doing some of these workshops live with uh, with this kind of stuff. But be creative. Uh, I love to paint cars like this. It's just a lot of fun. So this was made by uh, using the um, uh, using a flashlight on my car right in the right in the driveway, um, and I used the the key lock button on the key fob to get the lights to come on for a second. So again, it renders things really uniquely. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, light painting uh, with this mode it just renders things cool it it's almost cartoonish right it's it's a lot of fun it's fun to work on these images after in, in photoshop or lightroom um, just a blast number seven and i'll book a little bit here because i want to do some some live stuff number seven is uh is to incorporate cloud movement now this again was using an nd filter which allowed me to do a longer exposure and I believe I was doing like maybe one or two second exposures. The clouds were moving really fast. This was in Michigan. The clouds were moving really fast on Lake Michigan. Uh, the sunset fizzled out on us, so we didn't really get a great, you know, sunset. 
So I turned the camera vertically and, uh, and thought it was kind of cool at 12 millimeters to, uh, to get some of the cloud movement. And with live comp, it actually makes these clouds look like markers, right? It's like somebody took a marker and just scribbled out on the sky. It's really, really cool. So, so don't forget to play with some clouds. Uh, a lot of fun with a uh, live composite for sure. And number eight, there's that lightning, but here's how to estimate your shutter speed in some shots. And I have two ways to do it. So use live time or use aperture priority. So hear me out here. If I want to shoot something along the lines of a city at night, okay, uh, I want to shoot it at F8. I want to shoot it at 200 ISO. What is my shutter speed that I need for live composite? So one way you can do it is go to aperture priority or A on your mode dial. And now you have you have your 200 ISO set. You have your uh, F8 set, your, your um, F-stop on your lens. So now where does aperture priority tell you your shutter speed needs to be? Is it 15 seconds? Is it 20 seconds? It'll give you an about, right? But I have another way to do it. Now, lifetime, one of the kind of annoying things, but I leave it. You can shut it off if you want. But when you're in live time, any of these, you have noise reduction in the camera that's on. So if I do like a 10 second exposure in live, a live time, uh, it's going to be 10 seconds. I got to wait after for the noise reduction. Now, some people like to turn that off in their menu. They don't like to wait. I leave it on. And the reason is that 10 seconds, it'll take a black image and you'll have like zero noise in your image. Same thing with live, uh, live, uh, comp. You don't really get a lot of noise showing up in these images. It's really cool, but you got to go through the process. So keep that in mind if it's a long exposure, but if you go to live time, it's right next to live comp in your menu, right? I, I go to bulb or manual. I scroll down to live time and then one more time is live comp. So I'm right there. So I go to live time. I'm at 200 ISO. I'm at F8. I press my shutter and the image starts to take place and I go, oh, eight seconds. That was perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now I go to live comp, I press menu and I set it for F for eight seconds and then I know what I need. So that's a great way to, um, to get started with that. It gives you sort of uh, your parameters on what you might need. Now, number nine, and I'll go a little bit faster here, star trail shooting tip. On the other end, I want to do star trails. Okay, now I need the brightest lens I have, right? 1, 2, F2, 2.8. So you want to open up that aperture as bright as you can. So if I have a 2.8 lens, I'm going to open it up to 2.8. Now, you can only go up to 1600 ISO. So I'm going to go maybe 800, maybe 1600. I'm going to start out somewhere around 800 just to let more light in to get those stars, right? Uh, and then, you know, basically, uh, I'm going to let it roll from there. So maybe I'll do like a 20 second exposure or a 30 second exposure. Just kind of let it, let it roll a little bit. All right. I got to book a little bit. I went a little bit slow. Sorry, you guys. Number 10, this was a, uh, aquarium. I did a light painting class. So this is a computational feature. And like I said before, don't get too frustrated. Just keep pushing. Uh, you'll get the hang of it eventually. And when you do, you'll start having some great images. You'll also have happy accidents. This is definitely a mode for happy accidents. Uh, this shot was on a, a TV stand, one of those old TV stands that has like the black glass, right? So you get a reflection. I was talking about product photography. This is with the uh, light wand. So that's where the blue comes from and some of the yellows. But try to do some creative light painting with some products. Very, very fun stuff. So here's number 12. Live view boost. Now live view boost, it allows you to get an e it's easier for you to, um, to, um, adjust your, uh, how do I want to say this? Your foreground to, to know what's in the foreground and adjust sort of your scene and how you want it to look right. So when you're composing your image, um, it's nice to know sort of what's there. And when you do live view boost, it gets rid of the, the best thing about mirrorless cameras, right? Seeing your exposure. Uh, so everything's dark and you're trying to compose and with live view boost, you see the bottom image there on the right. Now you see everything almost like an optical finder. So I can go ahead and sort of compose my image where I want it and then go ahead and start, start it. Now in the OMD cameras, you can find this in the custom menu. It's the gear menu, right? It's under D and it's D2 and you'll see live view boost. OM one's a little different. This is actually under page three um, in the custom menu and, uh, same thing, gear menu, right? And actually it's called night vision. So it'd be a little different. It's night vision in the OM one, but that's similar thing to live view boost. 
Number 13 is to use a remote release or the OM share app. So again, you know, you're, you're doing long exposures. You don't want to move the camera. So by using a remote, I use this, the, uh, the UC one, uh, UC two, I believe I use is that the one I use the one with the wire. Um, so also on the phone, you have the app there and you can do live, you can see what's happening, or you can actually change it to this look here where you have a remote on the phone. You can do half press, you can lock it, you can do whatever you want, just like a standard remote. I use a physical remote because I, I'm old school. I like having that sort of physical remote, but the phone works whenever I don't have it. Now, one of the cool things is that on the OM1, so all of these cameras will cut the image stabilization when you're in these long exposure modes, but the OM one in live comp will now stay on. It'll keep the stabilizer on so that you can play with hand holding, which is kind of neat. Number 14 is to get yourself a nice steady tripod. So again, mentioning the OM one where you can sort of handhold, um, but this isn't a rule. Rules are meant to be broken. This is just a suggestion. Your stabilizer is going to be cut on all the cameras except the OM-1. Um, so I always use a tripod uh, or like I did the other day, a garbage can with an iPad and a wallet. Um, but a good steady tripod definitely helps keep your camera steady in these conditions. We have great five axis stabilization, the best in the industry, but there's times you're going to want to do a nice long exposure and put it on a tripod. So I have a solid tripod in your car for sure. And my last tip for you guys before I answer some questions and do a live is to break the rules. There's nothing wrong with uh, following the rules, like using a tripod. Uh, but in, as in all photography, uh, it's okay to break those rules and uh, you know turn off the, the embody stabilizer, except OM1, of course. Uh, you know this is a handheld image. Um, I handheld it and sort of on purpose, just knowing knowing I was going to move. Uh, but I kind of like the way it looks. Right? Try driving down the road as a passenger and and holding one of these up with no stabilization. Uh, getting some of those funky lights as you're going through a city. I mean, there's so many fun things you can do uh, just to just to play around. You don't have to have a perfect image. So, all right. So that is my presentation there. And so what I'd like to do now is uh, answer some questions that we might have. And then uh, after that, I want to try and get some time here to, uh, to go ahead and... Um, and do a live for you guys, show you some of the tools that I use and maybe do something here. So let me see if I can answer a couple questions that came in. So the output file, is it a JPEG or a raw? Let me just see if I could bring this up. This is my first time you guys that I'm actually using uh, this program. I'm usually on zoom, so bear with me, but this is a great question. So the output file, are you ready? JPEG and or raw. So I shoot in raw and I get a raw file. It's pretty cool. Um, you can get JPEG if you put it in JPEG, or you can do JPEG and RAW. So it, it'll do any of those. But I shoot RAW uh, when I do this and, and let that go ahead and uh, and come through. So all of the computational features, actually, in our cameras allow you to do RAW except for the focus stacking feature. So if you shoot RAW with the focus stacking, uh, it'll give you all the RAW images up to the final stacked image and that's JPEG. And the reason for that is the camera is actually processing that image, right? It's trimming the edges, it's putting color in it, it's, you know, it's doing all that stuff, so it's processing. So it spits out a, a JPEG on that one. But yeah, everything's a uh, JPEG and or raw. All right, let's do another one. So James says, let's see, in manual mode, darker environments, night vision comes on, even though I have it turned off. Yeah, that, that happens sometimes. Uh, that's in the uh, OM1, I think it does. And I think on the EM13, um, the live, uh, um, ah, the mode I was talking about, I can't remember now, but yeah, that pops on too as well. Um, you just have to go in the menu and, uh, and turn it off. I believe, um, I'm not sure that's happened to me too, James. I'd have to actually go in and play with it a little bit, but I've, I've had that happen to me as well, uh, where it just automatically comes on, uh, but you can go right in that menu and just pop it off. So I uh, can't totally answer that. There probably is a way to keep that off, uh, officially all the time. Uh, and let me see what, uh, Hey Sarah, let's see what you have here. So which lens and ND filter that I use for my water shot. So was that the water shot that had the, uh, that had the water kind of coming around that little edge there? If it was that shot, that was a long time ago, but it was either the 12 millimeter, uh, F2, or it was probably a 12 to 100. Usually I shoot my water shots around 12 millimeter. 
Um, and then the ND filter was probably, if it was my 12, uh, then I was using an old Hoya uh, ND filter. And it was probably like a, you know, 10 stop or something along those lines. Uh, otherwise, my bigger lenses, I actually have the uh, the Benro filters, you know, 100 by 100. And, uh, you know, I put those on. So, uh, but probably 12 millimeter. And um, yeah, that's probably it. So, all right, what do we got here? Let's see. My remote. Is it sold on my website? Yes, the remote that I use, I can show you right now. It's actually this one here. It is the, oh, the CB2. I was right. So it is the CB2 remote. I like the wired one. Uh, we do have a Bluetooth one. So you can do wireless or wired with the new Bluetooth one. Uh, and that works with the OM5 and it works with the OM1. Uh, I like this one because, I, again, I, I, I like wired. I like being next to my camera and sort of doing that. So it really just depends on what you want. All right, output file for high res mode. Is it also raw? Yes. So again, the uh, raw and or JPEG, however you want to do it. So uh, it spits out a couple of files when you're in high res. It'll spit out a JPEG and it'll spit out a raw file. So uh, you sort of have both, uh, which is really kind of cool. And the, the high res works fantastic. I absolutely love it. So again, a lot of fun uh, playing with that. All right, you guys. So let me see if we can... Uh, Let's see if we can do something here with uh, with with something live really quick before we cut this. So I want to show you some of the tools uh, that I use. You're going to see me move around the office a little bit. Also, uh, bear with me because I'm using this mic right here. And when I walk away from it, we kind of lose my voice. So I have to keep that in mind as I light paint because I'm light painting next to me. And uh, and my lapel mic was not working tonight. So I'm, I'm sort of at a disadvantage here with that. So again, thanks for joining everybody. This is the fun part. If I can pull it off with this mic. So some of the things that I'm going to use tonight, some of the tools, um, I have this little Phoenix light here, which I absolutely love just a little flashlight. Uh, it's a thousand lumens. I mean, that's kind of bright, but you know, if you're, it also has a lower, uh, amount of lumens, but you know, if you're doing any kind of, uh, combat, you know, somebody breaks into your house who doesn't want a thousand lumens, right? So, um, Tonight, I actually bought this little pen light, or what I thought was a pen light, uh, but it just wasn't as narrow as I wanted. So I, I kind of played with it and added a business card. So I have this little tool here. It's a light painting tool uh, from this company right here. And this, this tool actually uh, will give us a really neat effect, and it actually attaches to uh, my light here, my flashlight, with a little adapter. So I'm going to use that a little bit. And then I have these really cool lights. They're from the company called Nebo. And I think they were originally made for plumbers. Um, you could stick them underneath a cabinet with a magnet, right? Or industrial use. Uh, this is called the Lil Larry or Little Larry, right? Let's see if that'll focus. There you go. And it's really cool because you have a bright light, semi-bright, and you have this flashing red, you know, emergency light, which is kind of cool to give a, a reddish or pinkish look. And then I also have that Savage Light one I talked about, and I could probably grab that right here. So here's that Savage Light one there. And this allows me to do different, you know, different, sorry, that's the Savage Light one. Allows me to do different colors here. So I have it set for blue right now. Uh, but this is really fun, you know, for light painting, for doing things behind, you know, people for portraits and things like that. So a lot of fun there. So we'll set that down. All right. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, this is going to be a little wonky for a second because I have to kind of set things up, but I'm going to shut some of the lights in the office uh, so that we can light paint. And uh, I'll show you my settings on the camera, uh, sort of how we're doing things here. And uh, what I have set up is I have the OM1 and I have a 12 millimeter F2 on the OM1. Uh, it's a fantastic little lens, nice and small. And uh, the way I have this set up, let me see if I can flip here. So there's my setup. It's it's basically just two foam pieces of foam core on top of a Pelican case. Uh, and the glass is one of those old school 80s, you know, just living room table glasses that, you know, you see through. I set that on top of the uh, foam core. So you can see the OM1 there with the 12 mil and then those pieces of foam core. So that's sort of uh, what we're going to shoot. I'm going to show you some of the settings. And then I'll set the camera at as well. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, if you guys don't mind, just give me a second. As I turn off some of these lights here, I'll turn them back on after. I'll probably leave one light on only because uh, then you can see me after. Hold on one second.
All right, so we can see a little bit of the tree, and that's because uh, because I left a light on here. But let's see what we're getting. So if I turn on my camera here, I'm going to go ahead and show you what my camera is going to see. Uh, and then I can actually show you up in the corner. You can see me over here. So you can kind of see what I'm doing up in the corner here uh, as I, I do this. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you my settings here on the camera. So let me go into my, my super control panel and press OK on the back of the camera. And you can see I'm at F8. So I want to keep everything in focus here. I'm at 200 ISO. Again, I want it as dark as I can because I want to light paint it, right? Let me press that again. So I'm in manual focus. I got my face detection off because I'm not focusing on anybody's head, right? Uh, single shot. That's it. Very, 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 very simple. 200 ISO F8. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in the bulb mode. I'm in manual now. I'm going to go to bulb. And uh, there's my shutter. There's my, I went the wrong way. So there's bulb. I'm doing everything while I'm looking here. So this is the live comp mode. Now, if I was going to go, let's say, the rear dial here and I go to bulb. So, oops, sorry. I'm looking at you and not at this. So let's go back here. All right. So there's bulb, right? I'm going to focus. See that focus peaking there a little bit. Now, if I press my shutter, I'm going to use my remote. And I just hold down that remote. I'm in bulb. And you can see it counting one, two, three. There's three seconds in bulb, right? So I'm going to press playback. What did I get? And there's what I got in three seconds. So just to give you an idea of bulb, right? I'm going to turn my rear dial one more time. And there's live time. We talked about live time. So again, I'm at F8, 200 ISO. Let's hit it. Boom. There goes my exposure. And you can see it building. That's just the LED light that I left on in the office. And that exposure is building. Well, here's eight seconds, nine. I stop it. And now we're going to have that right to the camera. I'm going to press playback. What did I get? Right. There's my nine second exposure. So it's kind of cool. Think again of a city at night and you're, you know, able to capture that and see it. By the way, this is a bonsai tree from Lego. I just, uh, my, my daughter came over this summer, both my daughters and my little one and I always pick a project every summer. And this summer we decided to build a Lego uh, something. And we decided on the bonsai tree with little frogs. So that's what we're at. All right. So let's go to live comp. This is the fun one. Now I set live comp at one second and I'll show you how to do that. I did that because I want to go ahead and, and paint my own light. Now, of course, a little bit of light's going to show up because of this LCD, but that's fine. So for these purposes, it's fine. So I'll make sure I'm in, I'm in focus again, right? <laughs> Um, I'm going to press the menu button. Let's go to OK first. Again, showing the settings. I'm at F8, 200 ISO. You know, very simple, very easy settings for this. This is something, like I said, maybe in a, on a winter day, you're bored and you want to try something. Press my menu. And that's going to allow me to change my time, right, by using my up and down arrows. I'm at one second. So when I hit OK, you remember what I said? I hit OK, and it's going to go into the composite settings in the menu. It's just the way it is, but I hit okay to make sure that I'm at one second. So here I leave everything. I just press the shutter button halfway to get out. All right. So trying to find that while looking at you guys. So again, I press menu to change my time. And then I press okay to make sure it's set. But it brings me into those settings and I just press the shutter halfway to get out. So otherwise you might not be set on the time, right? You want to okay it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press the shutter button once, and that's going to prepare it. It's going to do a one second shot, a little black image, right? And then I press it again, and that's going to start it. There you go. So that's the light right there. You see how it's counting on the top there? Five seconds, seven seconds, eight seconds. It's, it's just constantly building these exposures. And let me, let me do something. Let me stop this. Let me do something a little different. So let me, uh, let me hit my info button. Give me a second so that you can definitely see everything here. All right, we should be good. All right, let me start that again. I wanted it to really show you what we were doing here. So, all right, so it's counting, right? It's going to keep on layering these one second exposures. And that's the light from the LCD again. So it's not going to change that initial exposure. I'm at a 10 second exposure already. 
and, and nothing's changed. 10 one second exposures, but nothing's changing. So I'm going to start adding light. So I'm going to take, uh, take my flashlight. Let's try that first. We only got a few minutes here. I want to stay on time. So I'm going to take my flashlight. We're going to try and do one cool live comp thing here. So here's my flashlight, right? And I put that little like horsehair thing on. So I'm going to walk behind this and I'm going to light behind it. Let's see what we can get. How cool is that? So it kind of gives me a little silhouette, right? It's going to light everything back here. And that gives me a really, I don't know if you can hear me when I walk away, but that gives me a really cool, you know, background. Uh, actually kind of cool like that, which is a silhouette, isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of neat. Like I said, you get some happy accidents. And now I'm going to take that little pen light, the one that I, that I just bought. And I kind of wanted to play with to see how it works. It's not really a pen light. And I'm going to try to light some of that bonsai uh, with this. So let's see what we can get. So I'm just going to kind of, uh, I'm not going to talk for a sec because of the mic, but I'm just going to kind of use my hand and just light a little bit of this thing. It's kind of fun, almost a little too much light than I wanted, but hey, that's all right. It's something cool. It's kind of neat, right? You can just kind of keep going in and layering stuff. Here's that that red light from Nebo. I can just kind of add some some pinks in here because I think I did too much light. So maybe I can fix that a little bit. You know, get some reds in there. Now I overdid it with the red, so maybe I go back in with the white. I mean, again, there's a million things that you can do here to sort of uh, sort of play. And uh, maybe I'll finish it off with some more of this uh, this weird looking stuff that I did before. See what that looks like. All right. All right, so there's one example of what we can do. So now I'm going to stop it. I'm at, you know, two minutes and 58 seconds. A little noise reduction. And I'm shooting a raw here. Play it back. And there's my file. Now check this out. This is the coolest part. Ah, that's not it. Hold on. If I zoom in, that was Arizona. Look at the detail on this thing. It's fantastic. I mean, it's just unbelievable the rendering you get with this. So very, very cool stuff. Um, let's try one more. Let's do another one. We got a little bit of time before I come back on. Let's try one with the uh, Savage Light one. So let me grab that. And this one might be a little bright, but we'll try it out. So let's take the remote. We're going to start it again. Again, we'll do the one second. And there's that. Let me just grab this little Savage. That's just waving it by one time in blue. And that's really neat, isn't it? Now, maybe I'll add some of that red to the uh, front of this. Just a little bit. There you go. How cool is that? Really neat stuff. So then if I just take and maybe uh, maybe add a little bit more here. Let me uh, let me take my flashlight and see if I can just grab a little bit of this without overdoing it. Let's see. I think that's pretty cool, man. So I'm going to stop that. There you go. So again, let's take a look at our image. I'm going to play it back. And come on. 
I'm pressing info. <laughs> There's playback. Really neat, right? I mean, check that out. It's so cool how it renders. It's kind of giving me a hard edge because I've I've gone around with the light and everything. It's just really cool. So so very very fun stuff. Um, really easy to do. It's just again you can get happy accidents, good stuff, bad stuff. It's all about just playing around and seeing what you get. Let me come back on you guys. All right, let's see here. All right, there's me. So a lot of fun. I think that um, you can have a lot of fun with this with live comp uh, with any of the long exposure modes. Uh, but I think that. You know, playing around, sometimes you get these happy accidents. And, you know, I really think it's it's one of those features that goes beyond uh, because it allows you to really be creative. So I hope you guys picked up a few things from this. And I hope that it allows you to go ahead and, uh, you know, go forward to do some fun stuff. So let me, uh, let me answer one more question before we go. And um, what tool did I use for the background? So it's a really, really cool. On the first shot, it's almost like this little horsehair looking thing right uh, it's really fun it's from a company i can't remember the name of the company it's a light painting company and they got some really cool stuff and uh i can't quite remember the name but light paint brushes i believe it's called lpb and you can check them out and they got all kinds of stuff there's a whole kit you can buy you know really neat little tools for light painting and this is one of them and basically i just shook it with the uh, flashlight inside of it, it comes with these little adapters. So I can put my flashlight right inside, turn it on, and just move that around. And you get some really, really neat effects, right? I kind of like that silhouette with just doing that backdrop. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. Otherwise, I'm just using some foam core, you know, just, just building something really quick for you guys. So, all right. Well, thanks, you guys. I really hope that... Uh, that you enjoyed this and I hope that everybody got most of their questions answered and that they can go out now and you can go shoot some live composite. Uh, at least that's my, my hope for you guys. So, so definitely check out some of the other live sessions we have going on this week. Uh, World photography day is Saturday and we're doing a bunch of live sessions this week. So definitely check out some more of these live sessions. Really enjoy uh, you guys hanging out with me tonight and uh, checking this out. So it's been a lot of fun and I hope to see you guys again soon. And so, uh, so yeah, just, uh, just go out there and play. And again, you know, if you're doing something like star trails and just remember that for something along those lines, you want the brightest lens you can get, right? A 12 millimeter F2, a eight millimeter 1.8, your 12 to 40 F 2.8, seven to 14 2.8. You want that bright lens, right? And that's where you want to open up that aperture all the way, open it up to 2.8, open it up to 1.8 or 2.0. Uh, if you're doing like a landscape, a little bit different, right? Now you're going to shoot maybe more like an F8, you know, you want everything in focus. So then you can just utilize your F4 lenses or even your two eights and close them down to F4. So it really depends on what you're doing here. Uh, and also the amount of time, uh, utilize that, that live, uh, time, uh, cheat mode that I showed you where you go into live time, put in your aperture, you know, put in your, your ISO and then go ahead and let the camera, uh, select or you select, you know, how much that shutter speed should be. It's a great way to cheat, uh, in a way, right? Um, but also, you know, star trails, once again, now, you know, you're going to be 20 seconds, you know, so, uh, I think you guys will have a lot of fun with this. So thanks again for joining. I really appreciate it, everybody and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.